So good evening, everybody. Um, Happy New Year. So for me, uh, my New Year's resolution and stuff that I want to do starts tomorrow. It didn't start a day after New Year's. Um, You know, Pastor Nathan talked uh, a little bit about who we are and what we do. This is around our sixth Sunday. Um, so we're kind of getting our footing. We, we, there's no question that we're called uh, to be in this space. Um, our observation has been, uh, and my wife has, uh, Pastor Cindy has been here since she was five, that, um, that we really, really want to reach uh, people in the neighborhood and share the love of Christ, hopefully in a way uh, that they hadn't seen or heard before. Because I think there's such a misunderstanding of who God is. And I think this beautiful space could be a a center for worship and a center for, you know, just sharing love for one another. And the love that comes in that we learn and get from Christ. It's it's like no other. And if I could just somehow, you know, with a shot or something... Give that to somebody, I, I would, as strong as and as hard as I could. And so that's why we're here. So it's, it's sometimes it's frustrating getting a ministry going. And, um, but when you feel the call and you're obedient, um, you know, you just do it. Um, you know, I talked about the new year, and we all start, right, with, like, this year I'm going to do this. And we think, like, I've always been thinking about doing this, and 2019 is the year. And if you notice online or social media, I'm on social media probably too much, but I've already seen it. 2019 is the year. Um, The healing, the next level, the new career, the marriage, or the breakup, or uh, (laughs) whatever it is. 2019 is the year, right? How, How many times have we heard this is the year? And statistics and data shows us, and you know, I hate to be a downer about it, but statistics shows us that by middle of January, it starts fading out, about 80% of people who started their goals, and by the end of January, um, it's kind of all, all but gone. Maybe there's some stragglers out there to keep on to their dreams and goals and efforts into February. So since I started mine, well, I will start mine tomorrow, my diet, so I guess I'm due to stop you know, at the tail end of January. But I think that in order for us to get to that next level and do things that are beyond perhaps even our own will and our own understanding, we need the supernatural power of God. We absolutely do. And what ends up happening is we put our faith and our approval in others, right? You ever notice that at any given time, Any given day, any given month or whatever, we're constantly going through an approval process. Think about it. When you get, the the moment you wake up, you're putting on clothes that perhaps you think others are going to approve you wearing, right? You go to a restaurant or a fast food place, you have to make a decision, well, I approve this, I approve that. Uh, The way you get there, um... Sometimes you people are put in their heads, I, I approve the way this person is acting or treating me. We can just go on and on with the approval process. Banks, loans, um, you know, jobs, which is constantly, you know, going through an approval process. And there's a little bit of a danger zone here, though. There's a little bit of a danger zone. This is what I want to really, really kind of kickstart our new ministry and our um, message for today, and that is, If we put too much, too much emphasis on the approval of others and approval of the world, I think we're going to end up sometimes in a place where we are never satisfied. That we're constantly looking for approval. And as a result, what ends up happening, it has devastating effects on us. Devastating effects. I'll give you an example here in a second. So when I started out by saying, like, the only way we can really get there is actually through the supernatural power of God. And it talks about this in Jeremiah 1.5. And and God says, before you were even in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, in, in this version, concentrated 
You, I appointed you prophet to all the nations. You were approved. You were approved. Can someone say, I'm approved? I'm approved. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you and I approved you. I approved you. So now that I know that I am, a, I am approved by supernatural power and that I don't need the power of people outside the spiritual space, maybe I could kind of get going on my dreams and goals and things that I need to do to get to that next level. Let me give you an example of what I mean when you don't do that. I talk a lot from personal experience because it's just what I know at this point in my preaching style because I've come to the Lord pretty beat up, broken, recovering alcoholic, been through a few marriages, breakups, all kinds of weird stuff. Don't know how I ended up with the pulpit here and a beautiful wife had definitely married up. Um, <laughs> actually, my wife is actually responsible for a lot of my um, relationship with God because of her encouragement. But a few years, about 15 years ago, I started a small company so that I can make some really quick cash. And it was a landscape business. And um, we weren't a normal landscape business. It wasn't a mowing and blow the leaves. It was more like design, installation. We built um, uh, planters. We waterproofed the planters. And we also did the irrigation systems. So we get this call. I'm, I'm kind of a sales guy. I get this call to uh, put in the irrigation system for a really, really big celebrity. I mean, you, you would know him. I'm not going to mention his name. Really big celebrity ex-wife. <laughs> it's important, right? Because he took care of her. So we went up to this house and, and this estate and this whole area full of just high-end houses. And, I mean, you had to go through security. There's a gate. This is actually beyond Bel Air. I forgot what you call it. Beverly Wood or Beverly something, and it's just like really high up. And so we're walking, you know, the property, and I'm just really now starting to feel real good about myself, and wow, I got this contract, and, and I'm talking to her, and I realize, hey, I know her son. I used to live in a building in Hollywood for about three years, and there's a few people that live in there. We're very neighborly. We said hello, and and had small talk. I didn't know her, know him personally, but I had mentioned that. I said, "Hey, I know your son. You know, we live in the same building. You know." Just, and then we just kept on our, on our tour. And by the time I got home at the end of the day, my phone was blowing up. And I finally picked up the, the, the phone, and I am just getting really, really cursed out. I mean, I can't even tell you the words up here on stage or the pulpit here, what he was telling me, the client. You are a nobody. Why in the heck, in other words, why in the heck would you even bring anything up? You have no business having small talk to a person like that. You actually are a nobody and you are a landscaper. And okay, okay, I was in the Marine Corps, so I'm used to getting yelled at. I know how to handle it. But he just was relentless. You better tell me how you found out his na her name because you're, you weren't supposed to know that. So I came up with a lie. I said, some worker told me. Okay, now that you've told me that, you are fired. You are fired. You are no longer on that property. And if you show up on that property, I'm going to call the police. Okay. I was so, so devastated with that. It's about 20 years ago. I got into a depression. It lasted about 30 days. I couldn't help but think that I was disapproved by this person. I couldn't even believe it. Why did I get that way? Because I put my stock and all the value and worth of myself based on her approval. Right? To give you the, the difference of perspective, I called my business partner. I said, I, I'm sorry I messed that up. I'm sorry I messed that up. He goes, who cares? We make more money on other projects with less hassle. Said, who is she? 
I'm like, okay. I didn't look at it that way. He was like, I said, well, what did you do with, with the, client? the client? He says, I threatened him back. I said, you meet me. If you, you, know, you want to talk that way to me, I'll, I'll meet you, you know, down the corner. So he threatened the client back. What, I was devastated because I put value in someone else's opinion of me. It was a landscaper. You know, a few weeks ago, we talked about taking on giants and using what Scripture teaches us um, with King David and our battles and what we're going through in life. And we talked about um, the actual scenario where he's about to go take on Goliath and some of the lessons from that. So picture this. Um, I'm going to take you a little bit before that. So if you watch a television series or if you look at uh, a movie, every now and then there will be a movie that starts at a certain place. And then it will say, okay, two days earlier. And then it picks up there. So I'm going to pick up what Prophet Samuel talks about. What it means when someone is approved, when someone is anointed, and regardless of how they look and where they're, where they're at, how later they go on to do great things. 1 Samuel 16, now the Lord said to Samuel, you have mourned long enough for Saul. Saul was a king at one time that was a pretty decent guy. But because he took over and went his own direction, took the wheel of the car and, and decided, okay, God, I got it. I'm the king. Started going off. He started going off and doing some bad things. And so the Lord decided, okay, I got to remove this anointing from him. And Prophet Samuel is going to help me with this. And so um, it says here, I have rejected him as king of Israel. So fill your flask with olive oil and go to Bethlehem. Find a man named Jesse who lives there, for I have selected one of his sons to be my king. When they arrived, Samuel, looked, Samuel took one look at Eliab and thought, surely this is the Lord's anointed. You know, I love the Bible so much because Scripture teaches us so much about life, like right this very minute. That shows me that this is a precious and real map for life, right? Surely, surely this guy is anointed. I heard your pastor, your dad do a sermon using that particular scripture. I've never forgot it. But the Lord said to Samuel, don't judge by his appearance or height, for I have rejected him. The Lord doesn't see things the way you see them. People judge by outward appearance but the, Lord, but the Lord looks at the heart. The Lord looks at the heart. Isn't that awesome? Seriously, no matter how we look, no matter how in shape we are, no matter where we are, whether you are working on an irrigation system, whether you are a CEO, whether you're a celebrity or not, it doesn't matter. The Lord loves our heart. Can you say, I'm approved? I'm approved. So then we go to another son. Then Jesse told his son, I'm not even going to try to pronounce his name. Maybe you guys can help me. Abinadab. Huh? Yeah, see, these are the scripture giants here. So. To step forward and walk in front of Samuel. So there's another son coming up. But Samuel said, this is not the one the Lord has chosen. So next, Jesse summoned the other son, Shemiah. But Samuel said, neither is this the one the Lord has chosen. In the same way, all of seven Jesse's sons were presented to Samuel. But Samuel said to Jesse, the Lord has not chosen any of these. Then Samuel asked, are these all the sons you have? Is this all you got? Is this all you got? The Lord sent me here. Is this all you got? According to scripture, these guys look pretty good. So Jesse, this is how Jesse responds. There is still the youngest, Jesse replied, but he's out in the fields watching the sheep and the goats. Blah. Probably smells. It's also our landscaper. No, I don't know about that. <laughs> but seriously, notice how Jesse didn't even use his son's name. He said he's the guy who watched the goats. 
Ah, you want me to go get him? I'll get him. Send for him at once, Samuel said. We will not sit down to eat until he arrives. Check out what this scripture says. We will not sit down to eat until he arrives. In other words, the son, who is unnamed at this point, wasn't even arrived for dinner. He wasn't even, he wasn't even asked to the party. That's how low the world viewed him. Oh, gosh. So Jesse sent for him. This is the part I really like. This is New Living Translation. Right? He was dark. And he was handsome. And he had beautiful eyes. There's other versions that doesn't say that. But so somehow I ran across this one and I really liked it. So Jesse sent for him. He was dark and handsome with beautiful eyes. And the Lord said, this is the one, anoint him. So David stood there among his brothers. Samuel took the flask off of olive oil he had brought and anointed David with the oil. And the spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon David from that day on. So does it matter where we're at in our life? Does it matter how we look? Does it matter at all? If we are approved by God, and if we are approved by God, we, we're probably anointed with a particular calling. Can we say I'm approved? I'm approved? What an what a awesome story. Talk about underdog. Talk about someone who was not even in consideration. Talk about someone who wasn't even invited to the party, wasn't even invited to eat, that he was out there hanging out with the goats and the landscaper. And we fast forward it over, fast forward over to the fight that he had with Goliath. And what we realize and what we see and what we've learned from that is actually there is a process after approval. Right? Jeremiah 1.5, before you were even born, before you were even in the womb, I approved you. So... What you can do next time you go for a loan in the bank, take that Bible and that scripture, show the, the loan officer, I'm approved, right? I'm approved, right? Of course I'm kidding. But King David later on turned out to be king. Uh, he later turned to become King David. He trusted the process. So what I'm saying here, when we're approved, when we're anointed, and we realize what that calling is, understand our purpose, regardless of where we are, we do have to trust the process. And be patient. Don't jump ahead. It's all going to be in God's timing. I want this place full. I would love to see this place full on the balcony. This worship team is one of the best worship teams I've heard all throughout L.A. And beyond, actually. <laughs> That's how I <we> feel. <laughs> but we're going through a process right now. We need to understand what our calling and purpose is out there and so we can bring them here. I got to kind of deal and just understand and be patient because I'm in God's timing, not mine. When we are in our timing, we're always going to be frustrated. Always. Always. Did you know that there's actual leaders, you and I shared about this last night, that aren't anointed? They're in a lead position. They are in ministry. They're not anointed. It's true. And then there's the other flip side of that. There's people that are becoming leaders, but and they're anointed, but they're not leaders yet. That's it's what I've observed. And I've also noticed too, when my wife and I, and Pastor Nathan too, and Pastor Roger, right? We all started this ministry together, and Cassandra now is on board, and we're all here together. But when we started this a couple of years ago, we used to have prophets, well, people who said they were prophets, come to us. I got a word for you. I got a word for you. Ooh. Oh, I'm feeling this really, 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 really strong. Come here, come here, come here. I'm going to tell you this word. I'm going to tell you this word. You're a frog. You're a tadpole. And once the tadpole goes up, you're going to do all this leaping. And You're like the kitchen, and you're going to get a chef. I mean, all kinds of interesting prophecy that we were 
given while we started out our ministry. Remember that, Pastor Roger? So much so that these prophets would grab the microphone and they start preaching, they start giving word, they start praying. I mean, why, Cindy and I are playing guitar. I mean, we're playing next to each other, and like, some person, some person just grabbed the mic. <laughs> because what they're saying is, the Lord said, and I feel it really strong that I need to go out and say this and do this. Everyone move over. Move over. God told me something. Move over. The Lord had said something. <laughs> okay, what about, get back in line, sir, or ma'am. Get back in line. And to be fair, nine times out of ten, when I've heard someone provide a word, actually it's pretty, it's actually pretty, pretty, uh, I wouldn't say accurate, but it's, it was, it's pretty good. And, but what ends up happening? What ends up happening? As soon as someone feels like they get a word and, 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 and it's really, really strong, their flesh, their personality, their, they, their will jumps right in front of that word, and then they start going on their own, start doing this stuff. Right? It kind of destroys the word that they've been given. I had a real successful, I mean, a real potential successful business deal. It was this other Christian, and it was a reality show. Can I use that word, reality? <laughs> And this person was saying, oh, this is Netflix. This is it. Millionaires, we're, <coughs> this is it. We're going to do it. We're going to do it. And, and I'm saying, hold on, hold on, man. I don't like talking to the big guys. I like talking to the small guys, you know, to try to do a deal. And then I couldn't even see some of the footage that we were doing. It was just, just block, uh, stay in your lane, Joe. Stay in your lane. Stay in your lane. And we had other business partners. This guy got so caught up in what he thought the Lord was leading him to do and how strong that, you know, this was his um, direction and forget about everybody else because God told him this way and the deal just crumbled. It was a great, it was a great situation and everyone quit. I was the first one. I was like, oh, I can't take this. We've got to follow the order and in, in God's timing. And you know, and what's beautiful about that? You ready, Yolanda, on the next scripture? Isaiah says, but now, O Lord, you are our father we are the day, and you, our potter, and all we are, the work of your hand. Isaiah 64, 8. So really, come on. Allow, allow yourself to go through the process when we're approved for God to mold us. Allow that. It's beautiful. I didn't realize that that's what was happening when I was a landscaper. Didn't realize that really I was being prepared for something bigger. And I'll get that in a second. So allow God to mold us. It's, I think it's actually such a beautiful thing. We can actually go out there and have great confidence and put a lot of energy knowing we have his backup, we have his approval, we have the anointing, and that we're going to be going through something, may even have a battle. So then why don't we feel good going through this process? I'm going to close with this. Maybe the band could come up. So why don't we feel comfortable if we know all of this, if we have all this information? How many times have we read the Bible, Scripture, we hang out in fellowship, in community, we go to church, <clears throat> we know what the direction that we should, where should we, we know where we should be going, and yet we still feel uncomfortable. Now I believe it's because sometimes when God is doing something in our life, it is not always on public display. And it's in seed form. When we are in seed form, it's not always meant to be in public display. Because in the infant stage, sometimes that's the time that we are most vulnerable. The most vulnerable. Think about it. When Jesus was born, they wanted to kill him off. They were so threatened by him that they wanted to kill him when he was an infant. So they went out and tried to kill all the two-year-olds, males. So all I'm here to say and declare and to encourage, and I mean this for my own self, because we often need to hear our own 
preaching and our own lessons is that we are approved. Can we say, I'm approved? I'm approved. And this messes, this messes with the culture. This is messes with the culture because what we want to do is say, hey, everybody, I'm approved. <laughs> look at this. Look at all the cars I have. Look at, look, at the, look at my hat. That's what I do. See my hat? Do you approve? Okay, okay. Uh, how many likes? I, I would post something up and not even a minute later, I'm looking for how many likes I have. Probably need to go to therapy for that. I only need God's approval because he's the supernatural one. He's the supernatural one. He's going to take us to another level with the anointing on us. That we're going to go through a process and that even that process could mean a battle or two. Could mean a battle or two. Doesn't need to be on public display. Just know. So I'm going to close with a little bit of a prayer. That in, Pray with me. Enjoy the glory that you're in right now. Being down on yourself just isn't productive. When it doesn't happen in your time, we're just going to be frustrated. You have a lot. We have a light that's already right with us. Pray and thank God that you approve me. Thank God that you approve me. Enjoy, enjoy the glory that you're in right now. And you don't have to have it all together to do these great things. Be proud of who God made you to be, that you're a masterpiece. Approve yourself. There will always be a reason to not feel right where you are. But you are redeemed, you are restored, you are forgiven, and you are approved. Amen? So now that we've heard this word, and we understand that we're approved, and that there is a process, I pray that you go out there and share this with somebody else. Share the word. This is just not only us to keep. We are called to go out there in the Great Commission and share the love of Christ with others. We have to do that. We're called to do that. And sometimes it's in our own way. And there, in, in that purpose and in that calling, you will find where you need to be. In Jesus' name, amen.